Guillermo, uh, actually Guillermo Gonzalez Aranda, uh, they call me Guillermo. Uh, that name just kind of stuck with me from childhood because they couldn't pronounce Guillermo. Um, I'm standing here, um, we're in uh, 2015, April, probably about the 26th, 27th. Uh, 2015 in front of La Dualidad, the duality. And uh, the concept for the duality, uh, this mural came from the uh, Mesoamerican philosophy of dual, duality, the positive and the negative forces that, uh, that exist and influence our lives daily, you know, not just uh, once in a while, but on a daily basis. And uh, <clears throat> the duality was um, based on the two worlds, the, the positive and the negative. The, uh, the world of Quetzalcoatl and the world of Tezcalipoca. And they were brothers and there was constant conflict of different energies, different forces. So <clears throat> Quetzalcoatl was the, uh, the light, uh, the positive, the creative. This Calipoca was the darkness, the, the uh, obscure, the, uh, the negative uh, anger, hatred, you know, uh, those aspects of life, you know. And so when we're angry, we, we fall into the world of this Calipoca. When we feel love, compassion in our hearts, you know, for something, then we're in the world of Quetzalcoatl. So <clears throat> there was a lot of uh, iconology associated with each world. And I, I, I took these images, pre-Columbian images, uh, and, and these symbols, uh, which dealt with the natural world, okay? Like the rabbit, the crocodile, the lizard, uh, flint, bamboo, the dog, the deer, you know, the deer would represent peace uh, because it was a vegetarian. It didn't harm any other living life, you know? and. Uh, so that's kind of how uh, the ancient uh, people uh, looked at it. So that's how, what, what I ended up doing was, uh, I started with those concepts, but uh, I, I kind of uh, brought them up to a contemporary uh, level, you know, contemporary uh, to the times that we, or we were, are existing. Uh, for instance, the, the uh, the uh, monkey uh, was supposed to represent inferior man. And uh, <clears throat> the monkey became a uh, half human, half machine uh, uh, being that, uh, and I represented him uh, like this, uh, this image here of the person with the, with the uh, gas mask, oxygen mask, and his one side of his body is human flesh, the other side is a, a mechanical machine. Uh, he, he's holding a cross, he's injecting himself with Christianity because uh, if we're familiar with the history of this continent and the coming of the Spaniards and the, uh, and, and the monks, uh, the friars, uh, uh, the missionaries uh, and the things that uh, uh, indigenous people went through. You know, uh, so <clears throat> so, uh, and around him, uh, or on his on his arm, he also has a shield, which I refer to as the shield of technology. He's got gears, industrialization. The edge is got is is ferrated, ferrated. You know, it's got the uh, the lines of uh, coins. You know. Uh, economics, right? Uh, enslavement. You know, today we, I believe we're, we are uh, economic slaves. You know, we live and work, and we uh, we pay our taxes, but we're just surviving economically. We're, we're enslaved into a economic system. Uh, but on this shield, on this shield, you have Quartemoc shackled down, uh, symbolic of. Uh, the destruction, or actually it's symbolic of uh, how this society justifies the destruction 
of uh, indigenous people and the natural world because they say this is for the advancement of civilization and uh, industrialization, you know. So we justify the destruction of the natural world, like what's happening in South America with uh, the grazing of cattle for profit and money, right? So that's what, uh, that's what that symbolizes. At the same time, uh, the sopilote, the, uh, the vulture, is uh, ripping out the heart. And, and, and I think that was more of a, a personal experience for mine because when I became aware of what actually took place on this continent with the coming of the, of the Spaniards and the Inquisition, uh, it actually hurt. It hurt, uh, it hurt my heart, you know, to see, to, to know that, uh, that we had, as a people, went through such uh, atrocities, you know? And uh, so that's what the, the buzzard and the, the ripping of the heart is. The jaguar up above is symbolic of uh, Tezcalipoca. That's his symbol, you know, the negative. The, and, and they use the jaguar because uh, he, 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 uh, he's an animal of the night, you know, and we stay close to the fires and to each other because uh, uh, he created fear, and so that was the symbol that was used for Tezcalipoca. Behind the, uh, or below him and to the right of the uh, uh, inferior man, we have, uh, uh, we have war, in, uh, we have uh, industrialization, we have the cities on, on fire, you know, uh, socially. The United States is, a, is a, and in particular San Diego, is a war industry. If you look around and you see all the uh, all the uh, uh, companies and businesses and corporations, you know, Roar, North Island, Convair, you know, they're all uh, war industries. They're, you know, they profit from war. This society profits from war. So that's some of the symbols that are involved in there. Uh, down to the bottom left here. You know, we have the rabbit who is symbolic of uh, fear because the rabbit, uh, when uh, if you're walking out in the hills and in the bush, you know, uh, if you see a rabbit, if a rabbit sees you, man, he jams, he's gone, right? The crocodile um, basking in the sun, laying around, unproductive, laziness, where that's what he was, you know? Uh, to the left here, we have uh, bamboo. Uh, Cariso, which is empty inside, you know, so that was emptiness, our, uh, empty lives. And below it, this, this is uh, supposed to represent flint because uh, it was sharp and also sterile, you know. There's a hand here, and this hand holds a torch, and there's a flame, and these flames are burning the feet of indigenous man, culture, you know. And you can see hands in the in the cariso and the bamboo, uh, which is the agony and the, and, and, the, and the pain that's been experienced by indigenous people of this continent. And this hand is is our hand. It's you and it's me, because if we're a part of the society, if we live in the society, if we work in the society, we're supporting it. And in supporting it, we're also contributing to the destruction of indigenous cultures and the natural world. So that's who, that's our role, even if we're unaware of it, you know, which uh, so many of us are because of our, our, you know, our struggle just to survive, you know. But uh, in reality, we're, we're, we're a part of this machine that is destroying uh, this culture. Uh, as we come to the as we come to the center, uh, we have we up on top we have a cross and and we have a, a God's eye and uh, in the center is is lightning and I found out at that time that uh, lightning uh, is, is created when hot and cold air masses come together. So it's actually an equalization. It's a way uh, of, of uh, balancing the atmosphere. So uh, in, in some way, I wanted to 
uh, fine. How do we, how do we uh, uh, balance these things out between two worlds, the positive and the negative? You know, there has to be some way. I knew that for me, uh, the culture and tradition uh, uh, gave me pride and dignity, you know, and self-respect as to who I am. Because uh, prior to understanding or even looking into our history, uh, I was always, uh, uh, I always felt, you know, uh, we're treated very inferior, right? And so we begin to feel inferior. Um, our culture doesn't matter. We're we're uh, dirty people, we're, do we're this, we're that, you know? And so we begin to feel these things within ourselves. And, uh, and uh, culture, traditions uh, have given me a different perspective as to who we are as a people. And uh, I think that we can feel uh, dignity and pride uh, knowing our, our culture and our history, you know? so. So that's where the danza comes in, uh, the deer dancer. And, uh, uh, of course, I had to put some pata coming out uh, be from behind the fist in uh, uh, different symbols. And then we have uh, the skull down here, which is uh, malinali. Uh, it is new life. So there's a transformation that is taking place right here. And then you have the tree of life coming up above it. Uh, I included different symbols, indigenous symbols like the thunderbird and, and the water bird, uh, which uh, the water bird is also symbolic for Native American church. Uh, so there we have ceremony and tradition. Uh, we have the blue deer among the, uh, uh, the Huichol, and my mother was from Nayarit, and she was of Cora and Huichol ancestry. And among the Huitol, uh, there's a story of uh, Watakame. And Watakame uh, uh, came across uh, the people when they were still wandering around, unsettled, you know. And he showed them how to plant and cultivate crops. And uh, that's how civilizations begin to establish themselves and flourish, you know. So, and Watakame also means that. Uh, it's symbolic of uh, the good of the heart. And they say that everybody has Watakame. And, and that's that good that we have in our hearts. Just below Watakame, we have the lizard. Now that lizard is fertility, the opposite of a, a flint, which was sterile. Uh, and then uh, uh, as, we, as we go up, uh, there's a scudo for, for the Centro Cultural. We had... Uh, uh, that's the symbol with the ceramic heart right there in the center of a stylized butterfly. And that symbol, you find it on the Gigantes of Tulac. Uh, uh, the Totecas uh, was a, uh, a, civil, a civilization that existed. The only thing that remains is their art, their pottery, their painting, their sculpture. Uh, so the word Toteca became synonymous with a master craftsman you know, artists, and that's also the name that we took as artists here at the Centro Toltecas in Aslan, because we're here in Aslan, the southwest, the mythical homeland of, uh, of the Aztec or the Mexica people. So <clears throat> we developed that symbol with the Quinto Sol, the five heads of the feathered serpent, Quetzalcoatl, the positive, the creative aspect of life. Uh, while I was working, on it, the moonstone was dug up. Uh, the woman here uh, was dug up in Mexico City, and matter, uh, we had a moon uh, with uh, the man in the moon kind of a, a profile in it at that time. And when uh, when I heard we, we were working on this mural, and when somebody brought me the newspaper of this moonstone being uncovered, uh, uh, so we changed the man in the moon into Cuatlique, the moonstone, because that's, you know, what was uh, uh, happening at that time. Above her, there's uh, an old man, an elder, uh, that's a uh, black elk. He's from the Lakota. Uh, we were 
developing Chicano studies at San Diego State, you know, and uh, we were reading a lot of books that dealt with uh, native and traditional ways. And um, there was one book, uh, Black Elk Speaks, and he talked about the sacred pipe and uh, just tradition and ceremony again. And uh, uh, being that we're so detached, or we were so detached from Mexico at that time, in order to begin to understand indigenous ways, we, we made alliances with uh, uh, different native peoples from this area. And that's how we got introduced to the sweat lodge and different things like that. And, so we begin to incorporate some of that philosophy, some of those traditions in our, in our lives. Uh, and then uh, uh, the, uh, the morning star, the nine-pointed, uh, uh, somehow we came across a nine-pointed uh, uh, morning star with a, with a, uh, a uh, kind of a color wheel inside of it. And, uh, and that's because of our, our as artists and, and uh, how we live our lives. So this, uh, this center section was, is, was supposed to be kind of a lead into uh, understanding and balancing our lives in, in a dual society. You know, we live in two worlds, right? And sometimes we fall one way or we go the other way. So uh, some, of the, some of the symbols, uh, like even, even the eagle feather or the color to the four directions that we find on the deer dancer uh, were very symbolic in, uh, in, uh, to us at that time. We're learning. It, it was a time of education. You know, this, this wall went through so many changes uh, because we were constantly learning different things, you know. Uh, and, and so we wanted to make everything as, as, as correct as we could. Uh, coming to the right into the world of Quetzalcoatl, you know, and some of these symbols like Malinale and the lizard uh, were, were positive uh, 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 creative symbols. But we also put a little scene here because we had begun to learn about uh, the, uh, the sweat lodge, the Temescal, the purification lodge. And uh, we had uh, built a, a small one behind my house. We were living in Encanto. And, uh, so we used to, we covered it with sarapes, with whatever we could find, you know, and we had built an adobe uh, kind of oven pit uh, so that we could have a fire in the city without being harassed by the fire department. Uh, if you notice uh, across the bottom and from the left, uh, we have the body of Quetzalcoatl coming, kind of tying the whole uh, image in the whole mural together as one. And uh, <clears throat> he, comes, he comes across and then he zooms in and boom, we have this sculpture uh, of Quetzalcoatl and then it's based on, uh, on some of the old uh, uh, sculptures that, uh, that we had, uh, uh, that we had seen on the pyramids or from Mexico, ancient Mexico. The, uh, the uh, double-headed eagle up on top also comes from uh, uh, Wichol beadwork, uh, our yarn work. <clears throat> and I put the wings of the Cuelga bird, you know, the great boycott was happening. So that symbol was very, very uh, present uh, throughout uh, those years, you know, when we're, we're, we're developing our consciousness about uh, what's going on with the farm workers and, and just in society uh, as it regards uh, indigenous people, Mexicanos, Chicanos, you know. Uh, there's, a, there's a little kiva up on top of that, uh, of that uh, pyramid and uh, the kiva was that sacred house, you know. That's where that ceremony and the culture and traditions are preserved. And, and we saw the central here because it's round uh, and, and, and it, was, it used to be completely open. Uh, we saw it as that, that kiva in, in the modern city, you know, where we're trying as artists, trying to re-educate ourselves and our communities about our culture and our traditions and who we really are. We're not Hispanic, we're not Latinos. Uh, 
you know, we call ourselves Chicanos, you know, and somebody had defined, you know, what's a Chicano? And I remember uh, saying, well, you know, a Chicano is a Mexican with an attitude, you know? We're not sitting still, you know? There's something going on, and we need to find out what's going on, and we need to remedy it, you know? And so through culture and tradition, this was our way as, as artists, not just visual artists, but dancers, poets, uh, sculptors, you know, every, every type of art that you could think of. Uh, the pyramid, three levels, which deals with the mind, the body, and the spirit, you know. Uh, we don't nourish all three, you know. Uh, and, and it's something that uh, I think that we need to do, you know, uh, consciously throughout our lives. Uh, there's two gigantes de Tula up and on both sides of the, of the, of the pyramid. And... Uh, we put those there because we identified with the Gigantes of Tulas as Tortecas and Aslan. And that's where we got that little symbol that's on the chest of it that went into, our, into the emblem for the center. <coughs> uh, to the left of the pyramid, we have the sacred pipe. Uh, we were being introduced, as I mentioned earlier, to the sweat lodge, to the sacred pipe. There was a, a uh, unity caravan that came through uh, San Diego at that time, and there was a four-day gathering that took place in the Cuca Ranch. And that was in the early, uh, I believe like 1970, 1970. We had just gotten into the Centro. Uh, and uh, that's where a lot of us were introduced to the Sweat Lodge and uh, getting to learn about the pipe and just the traditions and culture and how indigenous people uh, uh, were trying to unify. During that time there was a lot, of, a lot of things happening, not just with Chicanos but with blacks and whites and Asians. Uh, and, uh, so I felt that that was a very important symbol to be in there. Across to the right we have the corn, uh, Teo, Teo Chentli. Uh, sacred grain, you know, uh, the basis of a culture, you know, this is, it, it was uh, the substance that nourished people, you know, and that's where, that's why it was considered very sacred. Uh, to the top right, there's a story about uh, the hummingbird and how hummingbird uh, brought uh, fire uh, down to the people so that they could uh, keep warm, so that they could uh, cook their food, you know. And we continue to use fire, uh, even in electricity is like a fire. Atomic bombs is a fire, you know. We, we misuse it, but uh, originally it was brought by the, the hummingbird uh, uh, in order to, to help the two-legged people, you know, because they, they were wandering, they were lost, they were in darkness. So it brought light, it brought heat, you know, and it was able to, to assist us in nourishing ourselves. Uh, to the far top right, we have uh, Olin. Olin, and it has four directions, you know, the four cardinal points. Uh, to the sides and to the bottoms, it also has symbols of the duality, the, that balance. Uh, and, uh, and then, down below, at, at, oh, and the four seasons, you know, we have the four seasons, the four cardinal points, uh, the duality encompassed in that symbol. And below it, we have the owl, uh, um, the owl, the guardian of the night, you know, because the night is holy too, you know. So many of us fear the night, and, uh, uh, but the night is sacred, you know. And, uh, to the bottom, Right, uh, we have this, uh, this like a ledge, like we're standing on a ledge, you know? And uh, I, call that, I call that the abyss uh, in the books of, of uh, uh, Carlos Castaneda. Uh, we talked about uh, Carlos having to make a decision. He had to, to jump off this cliff, off this ledge, you know, and trust that uh, uh, that uh, he was going to survive. So this uh, this abyss is, is to me is very symbolic. Like 
we had to experience a lot of things in our lives that uh, that were new to us, that were different to us. And in some cases, uh, we were afraid to take that step. But uh, uh, if we don't take that step, if we don't step off that ledge, uh, we'll never experience those things in our lives. We'll never uh, resolve those issues that we have to. You know, we have to step forward. We have to step off that ledge. We have to jump into the abyss in order to uh, remedy and resolve uh, all, the, all these things. And for me, it's a, a lot about renewing and uh, uh, giving new life to, to ourselves, to our communities, our families. Uh, in the center, uh, also here, we have uh, the woman the, with the wings, you know. We live in, a, in, a, in an oppressive society when it comes to women. Uh, we used to have uh, matriarchal societies, you know. It was the women that made the decisions in some of our, our tribes as to whether we go to war or not, you know. Is that issue that important that it's worth losing your son or your husband, you know? How important is, is it that, uh, that we need to go and, and, and have conflict among ourselves, you know? Uh, uh, because uh, survive, uh, survival, you know, we depended on the men to hunt or to gather or whatever it is. Uh, and uh, uh, it had to be something serious, you know? You know, we didn't just go and, and have war because uh, we're short on oil or we need the natural resources from somebody else in another place across this, uh, this world, you know, this continent or, or this planet. <clears throat> so, you know, now, nowadays it's corporations that decide whether we're going to go to war or not. And uh, they send our young men off. <clears throat> well, in the matriarchal societies it was a woman, you know, and uh, the woman was valued, you know. It's not like today, you know, I tell some people, you know, if you really want to know uh, how our societies function. You need, you you get the values you, uh, of this society today, you know, and you just flip it over. You know, we live in a world that's about the individual right now. You know, you flip it over, and we're, we're talking about community. You know, uh, there's a lot of disrespect for the woman. You flip it over in indigenous societies, you find that there's a, a lot of respect for the woman. You know, so. Uh, <clears throat> that's what the image of a woman uh, that and, and that's that freedom that, that symbolic uh, uh, flight of, uh, of spirit that is that is being released so this is uh, <clears throat> more or less the uh, the uh, the uh, symbology of a lot of these images and uh, I, I know that there's probably more things in there that uh, that uh, I have forgotten to mention, but uh, they're there, you know, and uh, you know, like I said, it took me 15 years to finally uh, realize that uh, I'll, never, I'll never be done with it, you know. I worked on it for like 15 years. Uh, I, uh, I realized I, uh, it'll never be done because it was based on my understanding as, uh, as I'm educating myself on the philosophy and the culture and traditions of, of my ancestors. Uh, I'm constantly learning and there's so much that I'm not going to learn it all in my lifetime. And so I had to reach uh, that point after 15 years that uh, uh, I had to accept it where it was at and understand that it will never really be completed, you know but I had to find a point where I could comfortably step back from it. And so that's, that's uh, la dualidad, the duality, you know. So. Tell me a little bit about some of the artists that worked with you on the mural. Uh, Guillermo Roset Chavez, he was a, a young man just coming around. Uh, Ernesto Paul uh, was uh, 15 years old when he came here and you know started helping me out. David Avalos, uh, 
OG, uh, Jaime Enrique, uh, uh, a lot of them were, were young people. Uh, I was a little bit older because I had gone four years in the military service and then I had gone to college afterwards. So I was a few years older than uh, a lot of these guys. A few years, four or five years difference. <clears throat> but uh, most of them uh, uh, were young aspiring artists and uh, this, was, this was their first opportunity. Um, Arturo Roman, David Avalos, uh, Armando Nunez, uh, Salvador Barajas, uh, Ruben de Anda, you know, uh, these were guys that uh, uh, assisted me and supported me in, uh, in the mural uh, world. So.